I was wondering uh, what kind of research you do to play these kind of characters and how you can infuse such humanity in something that isn't associated with being a mammal or human life. Thank you. That's very lovely. Um, Abe Sabin was my first fish man. <laughs> and uh, so with him, I, I did, I wanted to infuse human and fish together. I had some goldfish at the time in my home office, and, and the reason I had them is because they were calming. They were just going to swim around and be like, la da da, la di da. And I wanted Abe Sabin to have that effect on the BPRD team, because Hellboy is not that. Cussing, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beer. <laughs> so I wanted to be the, they're there, part of the team. Uh, and so, um, but, there, but my goldfish had curious heads that kind of, right? With, a, with fins that kind of went behind like such, right? So I thought, oh, I like that whole, that whole ecosystem there. So I was at one of my early fittings at the creature shop at Spectral Motion, uh, where they were just putting a couple of pieces on me that were, that were finished and ready. So the hands were on, the head was on. I think I was shirtless, which was kind of hot. <laughs> and, uh, standing in front of a big mirror, a big full full length mirror, kind of doing doing that. <laughs> and from over here, I hear a voice, very familiar, saying, "That I like that. Keep it." Del <laughs> <laughs> Toro was in the shop that day, and it didn't tell me he was coming. So he was just quietly watching me from the side, going. We never discussed any more ever again about Abe Sapien's movement. He liked what he saw, he kept it. Like that, yeah, like we were saying earlier. Uh, so that was Abe, right? Uh, then we come to The Shape of Water, the amphibian man. No association between the two characters. I'll answer that right now. <laughs> not a sequel, not a prequel, not a nothing. Um, they're different, different uh, creatures from different times <clears throat> with different backstories. So the backstory of the amphibian man was he was found as a, he was touted as a river god in the Amazon River in South America. So Guillermo del Toro told me specifically he did not want to see any Abe Sapien in this, in this fish man. Abe is a refined gentleman who's got a lot of vocabulary, he reads three books at a time, he knows classical music, all that. None of that exists in this guy. He's a creature from the wild. So I had to, to kind of take all that and leave it behind, right? So now I had to be more animalistic. So, uh, and if you look at the creature from the Black Lagoon, which was another childhood of oh, happy memory for me, right? Watching that. Uh, uh, that suit was rather cumbersome, and, and they couldn't be quite so fluid in that, uh, um, you know, either uh, Rico Browning or uh, Ben Chapman. So, um, so I, I wanted to get more of that feeling. And this, The Shape of Water seemed to, seemed to be more of an homage to that creature from the Black, Black Lagoon movie. And if you ask Guillermo del Toro, he'll probably tell you that. Uh, because that movie was um, uh, one of his favorites as a child. And he was almost upset that the creature and Julie Adams did not end up together. Right? It's like, it was a total injustice because he wanted them to fall in love with each other. He thought it was beautiful. So he made that happen in our movie. I got the girl and we left that labor after. <laughs> On the set, though, uh, again, as a director, he's got a shorthand with me. Uh, he directs every actor differently from each other because he knows our personalities. He figures us out ahead of time and knows what buttons to push uh, to, us, to get a, a reaction out of us. So with me, he wanted to remind me, you're not a human. I don't want to see human uh, uh, um, instincts in you. I want to see animal instincts in you. So the bathtub scene. Uh, one of the bathtub scenes. I was, I was uh, when Eliza had me in the bathtub, uh, keeping me at her house, and her neighbor Giles came over to babysit me, and he's sitting there by the bathtub drawing a picture of me while he's talking about his life, and he's sharing. You know, he's having a therapy session with this fish guy, right? <laughs> and my first instinct was to go, oh yeah, <laughs> you know, to react in a human way, is it because? Doug Jones understood the words, but the amphibian man didn't. So I had to channel uh, the family dog. When you're talking to the dog, you're such a good boy. They're like, mm -hmm. well, I am. Mm -hmm. I am better. So I wanted to get, I wanted to, to acknowledge that he was talking to me, but uh huh, you know. So uh, and to remind me of that, if I did give too much of a human response, Guillermo would say between cut, doggy. <laughs> so that helped a lot. <laughs> Thank you for asking. <laughs>